Three, two, one, go. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome. So here's my little fish that I want to make in 3D. And I don't know why I really want to make him in 3D, but I do. So let's get started in Nomad Sculpt. All right, so first things first, we want to bring in our image from uh, our images on the laptop or on the iPad. So we'll just tap here, we'll tap reference image. We'll tap on the image, import photos, and then we'll find our image here. All right, and I'll include a link to this image in the description. All right, now let's go, let's just tap on this screen around here so we can go to transform. Um, but if you can come out of it, just go back into here and you can go to transform. And once you're in transform, you can sort of make it bigger or smaller. I should have probably cropped it, but that's okay. I'll crop, I'll crop your guys. Okay, so that's pretty good. It doesn't need to be that big. And we'll tap on the screen once so we can go back to sculpting mode. All right, so I think in order to make him, I think we want to do maybe the tube tool in sort of like an S, a sphere at the end, and then a sphere flattened for the fin, for these two fins, and then maybe two spheres flattened for the, the back fin as well, and these little baby fins too. The eyes will just be... Uh, spheres and we'll figure that out when we get to it the mouth will sort of just do a boolean operation where we'll use a shape to sort of extract that shape out of our uh, kind of fish shape fish shape it's hard to say fish shape so if i want to use the tube tool um and i also let's make sure we tap on front here so we're going to use the tube tool and we're going to make sure we're going to use curve and we'll, we'll make sure that it's snap is on and spline is on. So I'm going to tap this little cube. So I'm making sure that I'm looking at the front. So we want to make an S curve, maybe something like this. Sort of pretend there's a, there's just like a skinny line. Um, so almost like the fish's spine. So we just want to follow that. So, um, let's just do something like this. So there's a bigger curve in front, then it goes down, then it sort of comes up like this. So that's pretty, pretty decent. We can sort of pull this down a little bit just because, um, if you notice, it goes up pretty high, then it goes pretty low, and then it comes up in the middle. So we might want to bring this down even a little bit more. So something like this. Maybe bring the front out a little bit. So you might have more or less nodes. And so spline just sort of connects them to make them nice and smooth. See how this is like not smooth? Spline just makes them nice and smooth, which is what we want. Um, the nodes, if you tap them black, it becomes an angle. You can just tap it again to go back. If you bring the nodes together, they turn red and they go away. Um, and that's better for like bigger curves. You don't really need the smaller, the smaller ones in there, but the smaller ones just give you a little bit more control over your tube. Um, so that's pretty much a, a crash course in, in tubes. Uh, radius is pretty important. You can tap it once and then you have an orange dot here and here. You can tap it three times and there's an orange dot next to each node. Or an orange node next to each node. Uh, so we'll go back to the original one, and there's only one here, and this just makes the whole thing bigger and smaller. We tap radius again, there's one here and here, and that just does one end at a time. And then if you tap on this one, then each individual node has its individual you know, you get it, you get the point. 
Okay, so we have our S shape. Now let's start to um, kind of make him look a little bit more like the, the drawing. So I think we want to just do radius twice so we can make this part bigger than this part. So we'll just stretch this out, make him nice and fat. So maybe something like this is pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Make the back a little thicker. Okay, so we have our S here. We only have one node here. Let's tap radius once. Uh, that way we have a node here and here. And let's make this one a lot bigger. So maybe something like that. And let's bend this up a little bit so his face isn't facing down so much. So although I like this and it's a good shape, uh, it's not quite the shape I want. I want him a little pudgier here. And I want this to be a little flatter. So I'm going to have to hit radius again. It ruins what we did, but um, we can now just move all of these and make them uh, a little bit wider. So let's just kind of open up these nodes a little bit, make them a little fatter, a little pudgier. And maybe something like this I think is good. And we can even move these up if we want to get rid of this, that little curve right here but it, we're, we're going to wind up smoothing that out anyway so don't worry too much about that we'll get it worked out so just try to make it so it's not so um so something like this we want it like sort of curvy just sort of matching this as much as as much as you want um and we'll put a sphere on the end to make this little round this little round his, his face but I think this is pretty good the rest of this we can sort of I think we can maneuver let's make his tail a little bit smaller okay so we basically just want some sort of weird shape like this I know it's weird but it'll come together I promise okay so we're not going to validate it just yet we want to let's put the sphere on and see if we can sort of match it up uh, and make it look good uh first let's go to the gizmo let's see if we can do this move so we'll go to the gizmo and just hit move origin and we'll just sort of move it to the middle so i kind of do that because uh i work with symmetry a lot so move origin if you go to the gizmo which is this one here if you go to the gizmo and these option move origin brings it to world center so that brings it to the center of the project um and that just helps with symmetry and with with uh making your sculpt and also another thing I forgot, I failed to mention in the beginning, I'm using a met cap to skip to sculpt in. And if you want yours to look like mine, go to this uh, window here and just change it from lit PBR to met cap. I think it's a lot easier to see. Um, there's a few other ones. Sometimes I use this one or this one. So this one, yeah. So sometimes this one's a little easier to see. Okay, so let's add our sphere in. So let's go here, oh, let's go here, add sphere, and, and before we actually move the sphere over to the front, let's take this, let's go to snap, so tap snap and make sure it's at 90 degrees. And right now we're on, just make sure that you're on this body shape that we'd made first. And let's spin it. So now let's go back to Gizmo and do Move Origin again. So now it should be right here in the middle. Um, so now it's in the middle of our project and the front is facing us. Okay, so now we can turn it back and you see, oops, it says right here. That's what we want. So this was the tube. This is the body. The sphere. This is going to be the head and eventually we'll, we'll merge these together so that's the head it's gizmo and let's move the head over and just make it bigger and now you can just sort of fit it in there you know just sort of
So something like this. It's pretty good. I think we can I think we can stretch it out and then rotate it. Oh, let's go off snap because if we're on snap then it'll continue to it'll just it'll only be able to move 90 degrees so we don't want that so let's take a look at it from the front and just notice that i'm, I'm actually keeping this in the front i'm not moving it from left to right let me undo i'm just moving it up and down and it's in the direct front so that's another thing that when i'm sculpting i try to keep everything see this this shape the front is straight towards me the sphere the front is straight towards me it's still in the middle of the canvas. This is world center right here. Um, so try not to move things left and right because then it goes kind of off center. It makes it more difficult. So even though I'm, even though I have my screen to the right with the sphere, I'm still, I'm still, whoops. I'm, I'm still only moving up and down. And if it's not hitting the sides like this, all I have to do is make it, make it bigger maybe flatten it okay so if you notice my gizmo is sort of off if I if I tap right then my gizmo is perfectly uh, to the right um, that's because I'm on world so let me get it off world so now the symmetry is the sphere I'm not gonna go too much into that because it's really confusing I know but world um, So I essentially just want to move, I just want to tilt this so that, you know, when we shrink it like this, the oblong part is like coming out. It's probably like super confusing. I know it looks kind of, looks kind of funny now, but sculpts always look so funny until they don't. <laughs> It's bad sometimes. Oops. Let's make it a little bigger. So to make a long story short, all I'm trying to do is put fit this on the end of our little thing here. So the fins will go here, the back fin will go here, the eyes will go here, and the tail will be kind of over there. Maybe I'll bring it back in a little bit. Okay, I think something like this is good. So, so now if I touch, if I tap right, I'm sort of seeing um, the shapes are sort of starting to come together. One thing I see about both of these is that they're facing too much, too too far down. So I'm just going to grab both of them and just kind of rotate it up a little bit. So now when I tap right, it's sort of in a better position. So this is sort of the position of the drawing. So if, I don't know if that might help. So this is sort of the position of the drawing. This is way too far down. And this maybe can be a little bit more arched. So now we can go back here. That's why I didn't validate this. Let's make sure we tap tube. That way the gizmo will go away. So now as we see, there's a bigger arch here. So let's just make like a bigger, let's move the node up a little bit. And then we can sort of bring these up too. Let me get rid of that node. Okay, something like this. I just think it's just to be a little bit bigger. So I think something like that is a little better. Make it a little more squashed. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that looks good for now. So maybe we'll voxel merge these two together. <clears throat> but I think we can actually add the fins uh, while we're here, before we even do all that, we might as well voxel merge it all together. So let's save. And 
let's add, let's block in the fins. So I'll tap front and let's add some fins. So we'll add sphere, we'll move this one up. And this one will go sort of here, maybe towards the back a little bit, like in the drawing. And maybe a little bigger. Now I'll turn it to the front and just kind of squeeze it together. Okay. And before we validate, let's go ahead and add, let's bring this to the bottom. Oops. So this will be our dorsal fin. Let's clone it. Bring it down here. And let's clone this one. And then we'll move that one to the, we'll make these two little ones back here. So let me make these smaller. So we're really just doing some hardcore blocking out of our, <clears throat> of our little fish here. So this bottom one, these bottom two, we can actually mirror. So if we tap mirror and then the red arrow, you can bring them apart like that. Same thing with this one. So we'll tap this mirror, let's bring it up and then bring it over. So something like this. So that these are going to be our two little fins. So he has another fin back here. So let's take this one and let's validate this one actually. So we'll clone it and then we'll bring it down to where it will live eventually. So that's right about here. We do have the tail as well. I don't know if I want to use a cylinder or a sphere for the tail, but um, I think I think for now we can just use a cylinder since we're on a cylinder roll. So let's move this one over, down, and let's stretch it out. Let's clone it, bring this one down. And this one can just be regular because this one is a little bit smaller. We'll stretch it out. So we can turn that into our, into our tail. I think that'll work. All right, so let's save. Forgot what I was gonna do next. Oh, okay. So let's, <laughs> let's label all of these so we don't uh, start getting confused. So I'll rename this dorsal, oops. So dorsal fin, and this is a mirror, so I just want to rename this um, side, side fins. And this is the back side fins. This one will be the baby dorsal. This is, these two are the tail. So this is tail, little, and this is tail big. What is this? Oh, did I rename the wrong one? Okay. So now we have these all named, so that'll make our lives a lot easier. Uh, we might as well block in some eyeballs. So let's just uh, add a sphere. mirrored so it's going to be something like this 
Perfect, perfect. And then I guess we can clone this too. So let's name this eyes. I'm naming the I'm naming the mirror and this eyes just so I don't get confused. And I'm gonna clone this. Oops. I think when I when you clone, you want to make sure that you have uh, both of these selected and clone. That way, it'll be exactly the same. Otherwise, you might run into issues. These are going to be those little tiny things that are on his forehead. Whoops. So I want to make sure I'm just on the eyes. I'm going to rename both of these to... Um, let's just do... Let's just make them antennae. I don't think any fish have antennae, but... So I'm, since as the artist, I can do whatever I can, right? That's the beauty of it. So now there's these two antennae. We can make them very small. Let's make sure that we're on the antennae. That way, this, that way we're mirrored and the mirror will move as we wish. Because if we're on the red, as you see, it doesn't, it doesn't respect the symmetry. So you want to be on antennae. So let's make these smaller and maybe a little closer together. Sort of something like that. And there's two more of them there, but I think when we make these, I think we can probably duplicate these to make that shape. So I think we're in a good spot for now. Let's save. All right, so symmetry. So this is the center symmetry line going down the front. Uh, we've done everything, we've used the mirrors, we haven't moved anything off of the center lines. So that will just make our symmetry experience much easier. I try to stay uh, on the center line when I'm sculpting. Um, and then once I make everything, if I, if I feel like it needs to be off center, I'll, I'll move it then. But I try to get most of this work done um, cleanly, you know, with the symmetry intact. So let's make Let's sort of shape out these fins. So we'll, we'll start with the dorsal fin and let's go to symmetry. And I always like to go down and turn on show line and show plane. So now when you touch the gizmo, when you, when you touch a tool, we're going to use the move tool. And maybe it's a little bit hard to see with this color. Hopefully you can see that. The line is going down the middle. And that's what we want. Maybe I'll change this so you can see it a little bit better. Hmm. Still hard to see. So the line is going down the middle. And that means the symmetry, see these like these dots? So the symmetry is on either side. So if I was to make this really small and go like this, it's going to do them on both sides. But remember, it didn't do it on both sides because I don't have symmetry ticked off. So make sure you have symmetry ticked off and it will go on both sides. There we go. I don't know how it just turned off again. I guess I can rewind the tape and see why what I did. So the line is going down the front. Uh, this is the red axis. So the red correlates with this, this red plane. Uh, if we wanted to do something like the top and the bottom, if we wanted the, the top and the bottom, we would change that to green. And see, now the line is here, top and bottom, so it would move on the top and the bottom. So we have one line going across here, which is the red symmetry. We have the green, which is the halfway going through here. And there's another symmetry. So we have this half, we have this half, but there's also this half straight down. Like if we wanted to do here and here. So just... I know that's kind of confusing, but just remember that wherever this line is and see these two dots, that's your symmetry point. So if I wanted to do this here and here, I would have to turn that off and use the X. See the X is this axis. So now I can do this and this. Um, if 
but I know symmetry is confusing, so that's why I'm sort of going through this. Um, but just to go over it again, this first X, is that X? Oh, it is X. X is the red symmetry line. This is really confusing. Let's just, let's just keep going. Hopefully it makes sense. Let me know in the comments. I can kind of go over that more. I just feel like it's, it's such an important part of sculpting. And once you get it, it'll make things so much easier. So sometimes I struggle to make myself as clear as I want to without spending an hour doing it. So uh, go, you can replay that if you want to replay it. But let's move on because maybe some of you are like, okay, we get it, symmetry. Follow the lines. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so. Okay, so what do we want to do here? So we want both sides. I'm using the move tool. Radius is about 250. Intensity is all the way up. We're on our dorsal fin. So we want to use the move tool to make this shape into this shape. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So eh, actually, no, that's good. So let's move this out. So I just do a series of like pushes and pulls. So I kind of pull it out to make it a little smaller. So I kind of pull out the end, pull out here. And it's really just a matter of pushing and pulling until it's the shape that you want. Um, and just be careful not to go too small with your, with your uh, radius tool because you want it to maintain a nice, fluid lines you don't want it to start to look too like jagged and the only reason it will look jagged if it like if it gets too small and then you're sort of moving things like this that doesn't look good we want to use you know at least like 175 and up and we want to make this nice and round too we don't want it to be you know very sharp we just want it to be nice and round so just sort of mold it until you get a nice round fin. Like, I think that looks pretty good. And we can actually take our gizmo and we can make it a little thicker if we want. Maybe something like that. So I think that looks pretty good. If this was the direction, I think it's a, I think it's actually a pretty good spot. Could maybe rotate it and bring it down the back a little bit more. here's another little secret uh, if I wanted to stretch if I wanted to stretch it out this way see my gizmo this one is like this world doesn't really help me but if I wanted to really stretch it out this way I could use pivot I could tap pivot and then I can adjust this see I can adjust these arrows so I can make it so this arrow is pointing either the way that you want it to move or the opposite way that you want it to move, like whatever way you want it to stretch, tap pivot again. And now we have that, you know, the, the stretching mechanism so I can stretch it in that direction. Another pretty useful trick that I, that I use often. So I think it's looking pretty good. The only thing that I'm seeing is on the drawing, this goes a little bit further down the back. So let's just move that a little bit. So we'll just do a little bit of adjusting. And just make it so it's down his back a little bit more. Here we go. I think I like that. Good. So now let's do the same thing with these fins. So we can actually just tap on those fins and we can do the exact same thing because it's the, uh, let's go ahead and validate these. So if we look at symmetry, it's the same symmetry. We're on X and you see this line is um, down the, the center. We do want symmetry because even though they're mirrored, we still want everything to happen on one side that happens on the other side. So 
So you can pretty much just pretend that there's one fin. You don't have to worry about the other fin because it's mirrored. So anything you do to one fin is going to happen to the other one. So again, I'm just pushing and pulling until I get a nice fin shape. There we go. I mean, it's actually pretty good. Nothing too fancy. So now we'll take Gizmo and we'll just sort of put it so that they're more, you know, in, in the right place. So first let's make them a little bit smaller. Maybe move them up and out. And now we can use the blue ring to rotate them out. So let's actually make them a little thicker. And actually, it's actually not too bad. I don't need to move them too, too much. It looks like they goes right behind the head. And they're a little bit, this line, like if I'm looking here, this line is a little more, actually it is kind of straight there. But I think I just want to bend these back a little bit more. So let's bend them back a little bit more and move them a little further back. I think that's pretty good. So now I can see this one underneath, which is perfect. That's what we want. I think that's good. So let's save. And now we'll go ahead and just do the same thing with these fins. We'll validate. Um, symmetry is right. So now we'll take move, but these are really small. So, I mean, it might actually be easier to just clone these, if I'm being honest. Um, but we did already label these, so you can feel free to clone these and bring these back, or you can just make your make your uh, fins again. I actually don't mind making fins. I, I find it quite fun to make fins. So I wound up including them in a lot of my, you know, my little characters and stuff. I just think they look cool. I just think like sharks and fish fins and stuff, they just look cool. All right, that looks pretty good. So the main thing is we want to sort of adjust them out like that. And then we need to bring them a little closer to the body, maybe a little smaller. Okay, so let's bring them out a little bit more and then let's bring this up because we want, we kind of want, uh, and here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna switch to world uh, because with world, it's easier to just bring them in and out. So I think something like that is actually pretty good. We kind of just want it sticking out like that, maybe a little lower. Because this blue goes underneath his whole body. So if I'm guessing that this line sort of goes like that and underneath this fin, um, then maybe I'll put the, push them down a little bit. How do they look from the bottom? They look good from the bottom. And probably just twist them up a little bit as you can see i am a complete detail crazy really really crazy all right so this guy we'll do the same thing we'll just use our move we want to use symmetry and make our little fin as it disappears Back to move. We can make the brush a little smaller because this this fin is really, really small. So that's not a problem. Let's make it smaller and just bring it down. Okay, I think this is pretty good. I think that works. All right, that's looking good. So now we can just adjust these the same exact way. Move tool, use symmetry. And we'll just try to shape this back fin now. Whoop. We wanna make it bigger because those fins are a lot bigger. 
So there we go. We really want to, we really want to move it as a whole. So that's actually pretty good. Moving out a little bit. And it looks like we can, oops, let's go back to here and move. Let's see if we can bring this in a little bit. Make it a little smaller, that way I can just sort of get that back. A little smaller even. Okay, I think that's a pretty good, that's pretty close. Now this guy, we'll go back to symmetry, we'll make sure symmetry's on, and we can do the same thing. We can just sort of maneuver him into, oh, let's make it a little bigger. Maneuver him into the correct position, which I think is something like this. And sometimes I'll just, I'll just flow and go back and forth, you know. That looks pretty good. This one is a little bit tall, so maybe I'll uh, I'll change the pivot and I'll just sort of I want to squeeze it in like this, so I'll just sort of flip it. So one of the arrows is pointing the way I want, and then I'll just sort of shrink it, and maybe make the whole thing a little smaller. Okay, I think that's good. Maybe make this a little smaller, but now it just becomes sort of preference. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and validate that. So the body shape is validated. We have all our shapes. I think he's looking pretty good. Um, just checking everything out, making sure I like everything. And I think so. So let's go ahead and save. All right, so I think um, moving forward, I, I, I might wanna adjust this bottom is like his lower jaw because right now it's very round, but I feel like this it should come out a little bit more. I mean, this is a, just like a really stylized, weird sort of sushi, fish, shark type thing. So it doesn't really matter, but it always matters to me a little bit. So I just tapped on it. I'm going to use move again, um, but I have to validate it first, which is fine. Validate, boom, move tool. You can see the symmetry line here, but remember, it's only gonna it's only gonna uh, work on both sides if we tap symmetry. Uh, otherwise, if I like start to move it, it'll look like it's doing what I want it to do, but then not good. So we want to make sure that we use symmetry. So what do we what do I want to do with it? Let's bring this out a little bit. I think something like that is good. And maybe even like just widen it out a little bit. Yeah, you know, let's just widen it. And maybe we want to flatten it a little bit. So maybe we'll flatten it. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's, what else do we want to do? I feel like this might be flat in the front, actually. I don't know. So, 
Yeah. Let's take flatten. And let's just flatten the front. Because it looks like it's just sort of flat right there. I just feel like it would be sort of flat. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so I just flatten it a little bit. I actually really like the flatten tool. And um, anytime I do think something like that, I just smooth it out too. I just use the smooth tool and go over it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It just feels like it would be sort of flat. Okay, so I think for the eyes, there's a couple things we could try. We could use inflate on this. So we can try inflate, but I'm thinking I might just use a torus. That might be actually pretty good. So inflate would look something like this. Which actually looks pretty good. It actually looks quite good. And that might be a little bit easier than using the torus, but since I mentioned it to you, I want to show you. So let's go back here. Uh, everything looks good. Let's add torus. Shout out to Quantillion. Oh, he commented on one of my Instagram. I have to, to go make sure I reply. He's like one of the one of the. He really really got me into. Um, he really led the way with me learning 3D. So, and that's this is in 2021. Uh, okay, Taurus. Sorry, I get sidetracked. So we have Sora, Taurus, Mirror, and let's. Why can't I? What, what, what's happening right now? What did I do? I don't know what I did. Taurus, Mirror. There we go. Oh, I know. It was these silly things. So let's just do edit to make those nodes go away. Otherwise, it's a little bit harder to move around. So we want to sort of make the torus and we want to use it for our, um, we want to use it the way that the inflate was sort of behind the eyes, almost like a connector, uh, the eye lid to the, the body. So of course this way doesn't work, it doesn't make sense. So we will snap 90 degrees. And let's use the blue so we're snapping it like this like so let's turn edit back on Oop. and i think it's the green we want if you kind of maneuver it the right way you'll see that green node and this controls the thickness so let's make it a little thicker and let's shrink it and now like if we do the top view we want to line it up so let's move it back here and over maybe back a little bit more so something like this but we want it to be we want it to be rounder here so it's like it's not really in the right spot so I'm gonna take it off of snap because we want to be able to move it freely now rotate it freely so off of snap maybe up a little bit maybe forward a little bit maybe make the whole thing smaller so now you see this is very similar to what I did with the inflate tool. You see the, the, the similarity. So something like that. But let's see if I can rotate it a little bit more so that we see a little bit more of it. I have to make it bigger and just bring it out. So it so could be something like this looks pretty good. I don't know which one I like better if I like this. I think I like this. Maybe we'll stick with this. I don't know. What do you guys think? So this can actually be uh, just like a skin fold or it could be the actual lid. I'm not too sure what I want to do yet, but I think it looks pretty good for now. We can definitely work with this. So let's save.
Okay, so I've been thinking long and hard, and I think I want to hide these, uh, I'll hide this for now. So this, the back eyelid, and I just want to put the eyes in a little bit towards each other, and maybe a little higher, and a little bit further back. Because the eyes are actually fairly close to the back of the head. So I think that's a little more true to the, the drawing. And I also want to, I'm gonna take it off world. Well, I guess it doesn't make a difference anymore. I wanna move them closer into the body. Yeah. I think I like that. And you could also, if you want to, I'm going to use pivot and I'm going to so I move the arrow there and then pivot so that I can squash them down if I want to. I just want to see how, what this looks like. I guess they can stay round. I kind of like them round. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm going to wait on the... I don't know if I'm going to use these uh, just yet. I guess we can move them to the... We can move them to where they need to go. Uh, when if, you're, if your gizmo is off of your shape, see, like, this is the shape we want. Oh, that's weird. So I just moved to the torus. Let's rename this to... Mm, let's rename it lids for now. Not lids, lids. Let's rename this one lids. Okay, so we'll tap on the orange lids and then we'll we'll just move it up into the general spot. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or maybe we'll use um maybe we'll use inflate to be determined. All right. So I think I want to merge some things together. So let's start with the tail. Start with these two. So the little tail, tail little and tail big. So let's just take these and join them together. And where's the body? Let's see, the body is here. So the body and the head are the main things that I want to bring together, I think, right now. Um, not the tail big just yet. I want to think more about how I want to bring them together. So we'll stick with the body and the head. So we're going to voxel or remesh them together. I think 200 is good for now. So we'll merge them at 200. And that's what we get. We can smooth everything out. Uh, let's use, yeah, we're good. Let's just smooth everything. Symmetry's on, so we know that both sides are being smoothed the same way, at the same time. Oops. Okay, looks good. I'm happy with it. I think that looks great. So now I want to, there's a couple of things that we can do. We can actually add the, the, um, the, the, all the parts together. I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave something and just add some like fun skin folds, but I don't know if we have to. For example, I really like, if we use inflate again, I like to do things like this. I just think they give it a little bit of a a little bit of a flavor that I really really like. You know, even back here. And of course, this is just like a stylistic thing that I that I just like to do. 
Um, and you'll know, you see it, I'm sure you, you see it in all my sculpts. I like to do little things like this. Even if they're slight, I just really like that little bit of that little bit of like acknowledgement that something is happening with the skin. I just like it. I do think we can bring, oh, I guess it's bedtime. The body and, the, and this, this part of the tail, I do think we can bring that together. So the head is the body now, and then we'll do the tail. So let's just do that. We'll voxel merge, same thing, 216. So we'll voxel merge that together. Everything still looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and smooth. Yeah, everything's looking good on both sides. So now that we have that taken care of, we can sort of figure out the eyes. And I think I might just use uh, inflate. So let's take the lids and just delete them. It's nice to know different ways to do certain things, but we don't really need it right now. So I wanna add this mouth in. So for that, we're gonna use a Boolean operation which is basically we're going to we're going to sort of figure out a shape and we're going to extract extract that from this mesh. I know, I should be going to sleep. So let's add um what shape is I mean it's sort of like a it's sort of like a cylinder. We'll do a cylinder. We'll move that to the front and then we'll I don't really have to snap it, but I'm just so used to snapping and doing it 90 degrees. Kind of like it. So now we just need to make our mouth shape. It feels like it's something like this, but maybe with a flatter top. So I'm going to go ahead and validate it. Oops. Go front. And I'll just trim the top. So we're using a trim tool, rectangle, easy peasy, something like that. So this is 60.5, and this is not, this is only like 3,000 something. So let's go ahead and, I want to get this out of the eyes though. Notice how it's in the eyes thing. I want it to just be its own thing. And let's find the body. So the body is now called tail big, so we'll rename that to body. Body, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So, or, or bozy, I guess. Whatever you want, bozy. So cylinder one is what we're going to cut out. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to the, where do I want to go? Oh, this, this window here, multi-res. I want to subdivide it. And that just, oops, let's go back one step until it's like 63K. And the reason why I'm doing that is I just, I feel like the cuts are a little bit better if the meshes are around the same number. I just feel like it, I'm not, sh I'm actually not certain because I've done tests with this a million times and I just can't quite remember if it makes a difference or not. But uh, sometimes it just looks bad. Like if this is a very low poly thing and I'm mixing it, voxel merging it and extracting it from a nut, something else, I just feel better when the numbers are sort of matched up because this is going to be deleted anyway. So I don't mind adding that much you know, making this a more dense thing, which is gonna add a lot to our scene. Anyway, I'm doing too much talking. All right, so I think this feels about right. Something like this, maybe angle it back a little bit. I kind of wanted to make him a little more cuter. So maybe a little higher like that. And we can always adjust the mouth. I think that's pretty good because we can always adjust this a little bit more. Maybe we'll bring it down a smidge. So let's save before we try this. All right, so I want to actually remesh the, the fish body and, whoops, 
the fish body and the mouth. And I, I want to remesh them because sometimes it's very difficult when you want to cut things out to get them looking nice and clean. So I think each shape we needs to be remeshed and then we can do the bullion operation and the cut will be cleaner at a very high remesh. So I'm going to take the body and this. So the cylinder is 63.6, .6, the body is 60.5, both pretty high. So let's save it because um, depending on your system, you know, it might crash. Uh, I don't think mine will, but let's, let's just uh, play it safe. So let's tap on the body and let's voxel remesh it because even though we're not, we're just voxel remeshing just for no reason, we're just going to make it denser. So we're going to make everything more dense, which will allow more details. So later on, we can decimate and we can sort of make it smaller. But for this, for these, for what I want to do, I want it to be as clean as possible. So we have to go with high density. And I don't feel that subdividing is this is does the same as voxel remeshing. Um, I don't really know the ins and outs of it, but I just feel like it just doesn't react the same way. So we'll go here, we're on the body, we'll go here to voxel remesh. Um, how, how much do I want to re remesh it to? Um, let's just try 500. Oops, let's get this. Let's just do 500. Let's just live dangerously. You can do like, just do 300 or 400 if you have a regular iPad or something where you think it might crash. Just don't do it this high, uh, these numbers. Okay, so now let's go here and let's do the same thing. Voxel remesh, like 350 maybe. Let's just try 350. Okay. So now let's see how they do. So we have the body and the cylinder are both selected and we're gonna minus the cylinder for the mouth and then we're gonna voxel remesh them together. And we're gonna do it at 500. Okay, I mean, it's decent. It's still not as clean as I would have wanted it to look. But I think this is the best that we're gonna do. I think that's pretty good. Push it in a little bit more. And just so the mouth has some depth to it. And I'll do the same thing, just erase and voxel merge. Voxel merge at 480. Why not? Okay, there we go. Fairly clean. So another thing that I, I, as you can see here, it looks like there's a little bit of a, little bit of a something here on the, on the nose. And you can see that the mouth actually goes back some. So, uh, let's see, there's a few things that we can do. We can either cut it, but I don't think that's the best way to do it. So firstly, let's take the move tool and just sort of pull out this little, this little piece here. Just a little bit, just to give him a little something here. I think that looks pretty good. And now for the bottom part, it looks like he's like smiling. This one looks like he's more kind of like doofy and goofy. So I think what I need to do is open up this part of the mouth a little bit. So it doesn't look so just happy go lucky. And I think I want to pull pull it up some. So I'm just using the move tool. I think I want to pull this up and just sort of make like another little And you can see me sort of moving around the, the mesh is because I want to make sure that I'm looking at it from lots of different angles and making it smooth. 
but I sort of like I sort of like this and I just want to pull it up a little bit even. I think that kind of works. So he he doesn't really have a tongue, but we could always we could always give him a tongue. Let's give him a little tongue. We could always take it away if we want it. So we'll just add a sphere. We'll call it um, tongue. We'll go ahead and validate it, and we'll just bring it up. A little bit smaller, flatten. Doesn't even need to be too uh, detailed or anything. I think something like that is fine. Maybe a little flatter. A little bit wider. Okay, so at least he has a little tongue. We can always take it out if we want to later. Now for the teeth, I saw something really cool on Instagram, I think, or someone was doing teeth with the cylinder, which I really liked. I usually just use a, a sphere. Um, actually, I'll use the sphere. I'll use this. Oops. I use the sphere for this only because you're not really going to see. I don't really want too much, too many teeth. There is a cool thing that I saw uh, for teeth that I I will uh, play around with one day, and it's using the cylinder. But I don't think today is I don't think it needs to happen today. I think today we're just gonna smooth out this. We can go ahead and validate, and then I'm just gonna use the move tool symmetry, and I want to push this forward. So I'm making it really big. Move tools at like 440 something. And I just want to push it forward to give it that bend. Yes. Now we'll bring it in the mouth, make it smaller. And we can actually move it down a little bit. Or I should say, bend it down. Okay, I think something like that. Sort of what we're looking for. So now he has his little teeth. And his eyes. So let's add the let's add the inflate around the eyes. So I tapped on the body. We're gonna use inflate. And I just want to inflate. It doesn't have to go around the whole eye. Although you could make it around the whole eye if you wanted to. Let's see how it looks. I think I think one of the most fun things to do is just experiment. You know, I think that's one of the best ways to learn. And I learn a, a ton from these tutorials. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And I'll just take smooth and just sort of smooth that out. Maybe I'll make it a little less intense. Oop, make sure I'm on the body. And make sure my smoothness, okay. Sometimes I, I, I've been messing around with the smooth because I learned a, a new thing on YouTube but sometimes I have to make sure that I put my settings back to how they were. Otherwise I get real messed up. OK, 
Okay, I think that looks good. I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's um let's go ahead and remesh the body. I just want to remesh it again. So let's go here. Let's remesh it at like 300. That way we brought the size down a little bit. And I want to smooth out this mouth, maybe even flatten. So I'm going to take flatten and make it smaller and just make sure I'm on the body. And I just want to flatten this mouth out. And then do the same thing around the sides. Whoops, it's a little strong. Okay, and you can also pinch. You can take pinch. You can pinch these sides up a little bit. And there is a there is a cool method to sort of round out these edges, but I don't I think it's a little involved, and I, I think it'll be kind of confusing to try it. So I'm gonna do it in something separate. Uh, but go check out Holder on uh, Procreate FX on YouTube. That's where I learned it. It's very very useful in keeping the mesh, uh, keeping the poly counts low. There's lots of different uses for it. Whoops, what did I do? Okay, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to remesh it again. And just smooth it. Okay, so we have the mouth. So let's kind of do these little details. We need to make these little, these little thingies on his head. I think these might look better as cylinders. So like, let's make cylinders instead. So we'll go here, plus cylinder. We'll sort of move it into the general area. And mirror, you can separate them. We'll flatten them up. Make them a little smaller, bring them together. And then we wanna do our snap and snap them 90 degrees. Tap snap again. Oh yeah, I think this is a little bit better actually. So we'll just pinch them. And that's most of the work, honestly. So let's validate. We'll take our move tool and we want to move. Yeah, I think we just want to move left and right. And I think front and back too. So front and back is green. See that green line? So we want to do front and back as well. So we just want to straighten out. Let's make sure we tap symmetry and just straighten out the bottom. Here we go. Just round that out a little bit. That's pretty much what I wanted. Something like that. So we can go down to the gizmo. Let's go ahead and turn off the green. So we're in the gizmo and now we can sort of just putting up, put on the final touches. They're obviously a lot smaller. They're a little bit taller. And let's put them a little bit close together and let's just figure out where they go. So let's bring them down. It's actually a good spot. I think something, I think somewhere like here but just like bent a little bit more. Let's make them a little bit smaller. And then I'll, and then bent a little bit more. So we'll do move. We just want the red line in the middle. I'll raise this up. So I'll make the move tool quite big and just sort of push these, push them out a little bit. 
And now we can push them down and then sort of just bend them back a bit. And maybe even angle them a little bit this way and a little bit this way. Maybe a little bit more out this way. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, so let's add a little flavor to these, these things. So firstly, I think I'm just going to subdivide them once. So we'll tap here, subdivide, delete lower. Because mostly I just want to smooth them out a little bit. And ultimately, I, I would have liked to uh, join them to the body and voxel merge them, but they sort of get very ugly. So I'm just going to leave them separate. And I'm going to use inflate on the body and just give a little, a little love to our piece right there. There we go, something like that. All right, so let's do the eyes. This can this might get a little confusing, so I'm going to try to move through it slowly. So for the eyes, uh, we want to we want to do a boolean operation to carve out this initial sphere where the where the dark part of the eye is. So we have the yellow part of the eye. So that's this is going to be the yellow part of the eye. We're going to clone it so that we have a yellow part of the eye and then we have another clone and that's going to be the cornea. I don't know if we're actually going to use it, but just in case we need it, we'll have it. So that's already two spheres. So then we're going to clone this again and it's going to be three spheres. Uh, we'll do the Boolean operation. So we'll wind up erasing one of them once we, once we kind of carve out that section. And then another sphere we'll make really small, or not really small, but we'll make around this big, and that will be the, the actual pupil. So that will be another sphere. Um, so let's dive right into that. So this one is the eye. So that's the eye. We'll take both of these and let's just validate them. Join children, that's fine. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's fine. So here we have eyes. I'm going to bring it up to the top just so it's easier to get to. So first we're going to clone and name this one corn. So that's corn. As you see, there's still two of them. So corn I'm going to clone and call pupil. So now there's three. I'm just going to link them together. So corn and eyes are the same. They're all the same. So I'm just going to clone corn. And this was going to be I erase. And I'm going to move it up. So I erase is what's going to erase from the eye. So I'm going to hide corn and pupil because we don't, we don't need them right now. So I erase, I want to bring out, whoops. Let's tag symmetry. Will this make them do it? There we go. So touching symmetry on I erase is what we need. So we'll bring them out and this is going to be the pupil like the pupil sort of area. So we sort of just want it on the tip of the eye. So maybe something like that, maybe a little further up. You can see that's kind of big. So this might, I mean, it could possibly work 
but you have to test it out. So let's save. So let's take eyes and eye erase. And then we'll do the little eyeball for eye erase. And let's voxel merge them at, well, we'll do 235. Not bad. So that's not, that's not, that's actually not bad. I think I could make them a little bit bigger, but I think for now it's okay. No, I want to do a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So I'm going to unhide eye erase. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, maybe a little further out. So something like that, and then we'll do the same thing. Hide, I erase, and then voxel remesh them. Let's remesh them higher. Let's do it at like 400. Let's see if we can get a really clean cut. Oh, cut's not so bad, but I actually made it smaller somehow, which is what I didn't want to do. We'll go down to 250 and do it. Since it's not make oops, since it's not making that much of a difference. Okay, that's not bad. It actually looks nice with really big eyes like that. Might have to make the eyes bigger. <laughs> Gotta like it. So I think I like this. So let's take the pupil. We'll un unhide it we'll use gizmo and we'll bring it out whoops let's touch symmetry again we'll bring it out shrink it and just put it right in the middle I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I like that. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. And I actually don't know if I'm going to use, if I'm going to even use the, the corn. So I think I'm just going to delete it. Because I don't think we need it. So I do need to figure out if I want the eyes to be bigger. So let's just do a quick test with both the eyes and the pupils, just making them bigger. And you know, you can figure out if you want it bigger or if you don't. I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to tell which I like better. I think bigger sort of reads better, uh, oddly enough. I think it does actually read better when they're bigger. So maybe I'll do both. No, I'll just do, I'll just, I'll just leave these. I kind of like it. I don't like it. All right, so we've gone a long way. So let's do the eyelashes. We'll use the tube tool, path. You've seen me do this a million times. Same thing. I'm just gonna drag this along. Let go, drag again, drag again. Drag again, drag again, to maybe about here, and then I'll go off and tap that to make it a right angle. 
So let's make this, there we go. I think I might have done it a little bit too far. But that's okay, we'll just bring this, this in and we'll just sort of adjust this. And let's change this angle to about there. Okay, we can mirror it so we don't forget. And let's make this side really big so, that, so we have to hit radius once. And then we can make this side really big. And this side actually looks pretty good. I don't know how small I actually want it. I might just want it round. which is a little different than what I normally do, but I feel like that's what I want. I could always just bring this into the, into the skin. Yeah, that looks kind of nice. So I think I'm happy with this, happy with everything else, where everything else is. So I'm gonna go ahead and validate these. And then I'm gonna go and uh, round these out. They're gonna be a little soft, so just be careful with them. Be gentle with them. And then I'll use flatten to just sort of flatten out the shape of this. I just want it to be nice and rounded. I'll even take drag and just drag this and kind of drag it and sort of shape it a little bit and smooth it out with smooth. There is a little bit of forgiveness because those are going to be black anyway. All right, I think it's looking cool. Okay, so um, I want to do a major change. I want to bring this out more and bring this in more. So I'm just going to use move. And I'm just going to move this out more. And this in more. Sometimes it's just nice to just make changes. You know, you got to do what feels right. And uh, I don't know. I just wanted to make that change. I kind of want to bend the teeth in a little bit more. I like that. So don't, don't forget to just like sort of play, you know, like I know this is supposed to be like a, you know, tutorial and I'm supposed to get everything right. But honestly, a lot of the great things, no, not great. I mean, I hate like sounding like that, but a lot of the cool things you get, you know, you really have to just like play. You have to play and you have to just enjoy the playing part of it. You know, because for me, that's when I do some of my favorite things. Like even now, just sort of like playing around with this is fun. You know, I'm sort of figuring out like how I want the jaw to look, things like that. And it really does give it a sort of a, a different feel. You know what I mean? 
I don't, I, I never, it's nice to work from, from the drawing, but you don't have to be like beholden to it ever. That's the one great thing about creating art and doing art is like, don't ever be afraid to like deviate. You know, that's what makes it, that's what really makes it special. When you start like feeling like you can deviate and you can do what you want to do. I think that's one of the hardest things because we get so hyper focused on like getting things right and getting things like perfect and photorealistic. And that's just not, you know, I hardly even do photorealistic things because it's just once you try to get them looking photorealistic, after a while, people saying like, oh, this looks like a photo. I thought it was a photo. That gets real old real quick because then you've just done all this work for something that people don't even see as art. It's like they, they might, unless there's like a way that they can like know that it's an art and that someone did it, they're just thinking they're seeing a photo. And that's not, you can do all that work for someone to just think it's a photo. Just trying to flatten this out a little bit more. Sometimes the flatten tool can be a bit finicky. All I really want you to do is flatten the side of the mouth out. This, this, the corner of this mouth has been my arch enemy. So sometimes you just have to take the flatten tool and just Go for it. Just give it a little pressure and just go for it. Oh, I'm gonna smooth. That I don't know what that's about. If you notice, like I was using the flatten and there's like these squares. I get kind of confused at that. I'm not sure where they come from because they don't go away when I hit undo. It's a little strange. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with the, what I've done with my smooth tool. Feels like I've ruined it somehow. Hmm. So I'm gonna reset and just see if this fixes it. Guess I'm gonna save it. So now smooth is working again. But look at this, this like huge square. I don't know what's up with that. Very odd. So yeah, I know that I'm supposed to be sticking to <coughs> the tutorial and getting, getting everything perfect, but that's just not how I work. It's not how I work. But I like this. I believe this character. I, I kind of believe that he's a doofus now. Kind of like that. I don't even mind the tongue where it is. The only thing about the tongue is I want to bring it out. I want to bring it out and flatten. Flatten the sides. And you know what? Let's add a nice, where's crease? Let's do crease and 
Sometimes you can, if you really, if you want to play games, you can, you can use symmetry and try to get it in the middle. Bring it back. It's kind of difficult though. Because you have to make sure that the two dots don't go too far away. Like that. Maybe you want to put a little bend in it from the bottom. That sounds so weird. Like that. Slurp it back in there. I kind of, I kind of like that. Not really mad at that. The only other thing I can think of is maybe I want a little bit more shape here. Oops. Make sure I'm on the body. Yeah. Maybe round it off a little bit more. Okay, that's a good shape. All right. I think we're pretty good. So the only other thing, the only other shape I want to make is these like little things on the top. Let's do them real quick. With spheres. Here. These are just sort of like little decoration type things. So I'm not going to go too crazy with them. Sort of rounder on top. So again, just push and pull, you know, you just want to make the, the bottoms a little bit more sharper. But overall, you kind of just want like a fun sort of whimsical shape too, so. I mean, is that even right though? I don't even know if that's even the right shape. It almost looks more like the cylinder again. I've been having like such cylinder dilemmas lately. I think I might be able to just even just do this. I don't think it needs to be that deep. Maybe give it a maybe give him a little push. Maybe give him just a little little nudge. That might be it. You can take this. We can always shrink them up a little bit. Get them back into position. They're sort of bent down, I think. A little bit smaller still. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with the sculpting and modeling part. So the only thing I want to do now is change it from uh, Metcap to Lit PBR. So let's go up here and change it from Metcap to Lit PBR. Uh, I never like how glossy this is. And I, I always think it's better if you make, once you get to this point, if you make it matte. So what I mean, what I, what I mean by that is we're going to take everything. So we take everything. We go here. We go to white. And before it was like down here. So what we want to bring it to maybe, 
you know, I should just get like a number that I can just always use. I think five is that number. So let's make it like five. Point five. I think that's right, right? Maybe that's not right. Yeah, point five. I think Matt just always is is better. So this is this is a good um, posing spot. And we will do um, coloring and post process after this. Okay, so let's do a quick um, lighting. Let's light this little rascal. So the first thing that we want to do when we're lighting him is figure out what did the major the main pose is. I don't know why I can't talk. <laughs> So if we want like the main pose from the art, it's something like this, but let's change it. Let's change this from orthographic to perspective. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. So maybe like something like this is the main image. I wanna get that back, that back fin in there though. So you can sort of play around with this. Maybe there's like a better, better way to get the image how I want it. But you can play around with all this if you want. I think I kind of like this. I'd like to see a little bit more of the other eye. So maybe something like that. So I think something like this is good for the main view so let's tap here add view and i'll just name this one and as i make more views i'll just name them i'll just continue with the numbers let's see if there's any other views that i kind of like so i think view i think that's pretty good for now because when you start lighting, you want to have a main view and really lighting, it'll look different unless you, um, when you move the camera around and stuff like that. Although maybe, you, maybe, I, maybe I should start affixing them to the camera. I don't know. Let's not get too crazy. Okay, so let's start with our view that we like. And first, let's turn off the environment. So now it's black. It's kind of a nice silhouette. So the environment's off, and now we can add a light. So this is our first light. Let's take a nice look. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. And this is a this is a world light or a directional light. So obviously, where you move when you move it around. But usually the first light is is pretty decent. I'm just gonna try to see if there's any. I think I might like it around here. Something like this. I think that's good for the first light. Another thing I do for the first light is I usually raise the intensity to 1.5. Okay, so let's rename this to um, W1. And let's add a new light and name it W2. So now for the new light, we want to just move it over to the other side. It doesn't matter where it is. It's the same. It's a world light. Um, but I just find it easier to move them away from each other. So let's go to my view. And here's the light. So now I just want to put the light sort of on the other side. Just so it sort of lights up the other side. It's not as bright. Let me go to my view again. 
So it's not as bright and you can't really see that much of it unless he's turned like this. But you see, it sort of lightens up everything underneath. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to go back to the camera. See, it sort of lightens up everything underneath and it just sort of, you know, we're just sort of building in the atmosphere light. We'll add the environment back later, but for now, you know, these lights, see that this is even a nice, uh, this nice line here. So all I did was I have this light now pointing here. It's at 100%. This one is at uh, 150% or 1.5. Okay, so let's go back to our view because that's our main view. Oh, I feel like I kind of want it like this. Kind of like that too. So I'm going to call this two. All right, so we'll call this one two. So now I like to do an edge light. So let's do add another light. We'll tap on this icon. We'll make it a spotlight. And we'll turn the intensity up to 75. All right. So we're going to tap the gizmo so we can move the spotlight. So I'm going to bring it on the far side of whatever I'm doing and in the back. So back here, maybe a little further out. And there's a little cone showing you where the light is pointing. So you want to point that sort of around here. Let's bring it out a little bit more. So essentially what I'm trying to do with this light is make an edge light. So now, like if this was our view, with this light from behind, pointing at it like this, not from the side, but from the back, then you can start to get those really nice white lines. So you can see them here. If I move it down and away, you see those really nice white lines. That's what I want. So if I look at my view, this is the first view. So the first view, I actually have to move it pretty drastically in order to see them. So drastic that I don't even know really where, where my light is in space. Let's bring the light forward again. See if we can find it. Okay, something like this. It's actually a good spot. And as you can see, the light is there. Now I see it so I can kind of bring it up, bring it down if I wanted to try to put it underneath or something like that. But this actually looks really nice. It looks really nice with it over top. even more towards the back. That really nice white lines. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. This really these really nice white lines. But the only problem is they only work for oops, they only work for this. But I think that's beautiful, so I'm going to save it. So we have one more light. So unless there's a light source, um, I usually add another light from the top looking down. So we'll add a light. I'll rename it top down. I'll go to my gizmo so I can move it up. And let me make sure I turned it into a spotlight. There we go. So now we just want it aiming right down over top of him. OK, 
be. We'll bring it up. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our view. So now we have a nice rim light. We have a nice key light coming down here, the bright, the first light that was bright. We have a light that sort of uh, lights up a little bit of the far, the shadow side. We have the nice bright edge light, and then we have a light from above. Um, so another thing that I usually do is I take the shadows and I make them soft. So I go to the lights, top down, you can make the shadow soft. Um, or not, I mean, it looks, actually looks nice when it's not, but. So W1, that's the main key light. So that's the main light on our fish. So for this one, I'm gonna leave the shadow as is. I'm not gonna make it soft. But for this one, I'm gonna make the shadow soft. And for this light, I'm also gonna make the shadow soft. Okay. And I'd also like to put a background in there or even we just need some sort of, uh, we can even put a plane in. Just to keep it simple, we'll just, we'll just use a plane for now. We'll make it bigger. And we'll just bring it down. That'd be kind of cool to make it like Actually, that's something we can do quite easy, quite easily. But you know what? I'll do it later. I'll do it once we finish. So if you want to stick around. Let's go ahead and make this mat as well. And we'll validate it. All right. So at least now we can sort of see what the shadows are doing. see the other view all right I kind of like this view too so I just named this uh, view number three I just want to test out I might actually um, soften up this shadow and then unsoften top down kind of like that shadow there. I'm not sure. It might look kind of silly. Let's see. Top down. Softness. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. It's so easy to get sidetracked. So we have all of our lights here. So now we can sort of play with the environment and bring it back. I like to bring it pretty low. Because I probably don't really need much. Just filling in a little bit of this darkness, just a little bit of fill with the with that. I think I'll leave it at point two, two hundred. Okay, so I'm gonna save. I think this is a good point, a good place to start thinking about color. So we have a blue. Let's move, let's move this over. Let's move this up to over here. And 
we'll just save this as four. I don't know why they don't say, I wish they would just save in a row. That would make it so much easier. I don't know why they save like this and that you can't move them. Bugs me. All right, so blue. Hmm, I don't know why I can't get that color of blue. It's just kind of, actually, maybe it's more gray. Maybe that's where we're at. So it's something like that. But we can actually take the body... I should have named these. Actually, I'm going to name them now. Tfies. These are the, what are these? So I'm going to validate these. Join children. These will be the air dots. Plane can go down here. lights are always kind of just floating around I'm not sure how I feel about that, that these are the camera positions too I guess those I don't know why those are in this menu but I mean I guess I guess it makes sense if you understand I guess it makes sense so we have the side fins the only thing that's tricky is do we want to Put them all together, I mean, before we really color. That's the only thing. Uh, but we can paint all this stuff. We don't necessarily have to select them all. You can just kind of just paint them. Paint all this stuff. Excuse me. Okay, so that's the, that's a close match to the color of the art. You know what, I should just, I should make all of this way more simple and just start validating all of this stuff. Name, I antennae. Side fins. I think the, I think the symmetry still should still hold. Yeah, I think it does. Good, good. We'll validate that. Side fins. Baby dorsal eye antennae, dorsal fin. And body. So I think this is everything that needs to be blue. That's pretty much what I wanted. What is this tube? Oh, those are the lashies. Okay. So we might want to do a little bit more of a, a nice color with these. At least it's a little bit a little bit more a little bit brighter of a color. Oh, you know what I can do though? I can probably join all these. But I don't know if I want to now. I think we'll wait. The eyes are sort of a pale darkish yellow. Quite close to orange. Quite muted as well. 
I tend to do that very muted color in uh, Procreate. Pupils, of course, are going to be black, but I think glossy black. And these are actually going to be glossy as well. So I'm going to take this color. Oop, didn't mean to actually switch colors. Oops, just wanted to change the roughness. Okay, these can be black. But with roughness up, because we want them to be pure black. So let's take the color of these, this, for these. Paint. But we'll change this to 0.5, where everything else was. Doesn't need to be glossy. Tongue can be a similar color to the skin, but maybe a little bit darker. All right. Good, good, good. And I'd like to, I think I'd like to change him to his body, all of these, change them to subsurface. Turn this down to about one. Maybe even change the color of this. Change these as well. So I do want to put some paint on the bottom of this. So let's might be nicer to make this make him a little darker actually now that I'm thinking about it so maybe something like this that way we can <clears throat> excuse me we can really get that light color underneath Okay, so let's go with the body first. We'll add a layer. Let's get rid of this plane because it's driving me up a wall. And now that I hit it, it just doesn't want to go away. Thank you. So now we just want to paint underneath. Everything symmetry should still be working. Let's check out the image. So the paint actually goes from here. to underneath the fin. this in all right that looks pretty good it's pretty on point with uh, everything else I want to let's just go in close and see if we can get it a little smoother see if it has any effect not really. And let's make sure that uh, dynamic topology. So if we go here and turn that on, let's see if that makes any effect. 
And I know mostly it's not going to be clear because uh, when you use subsurface scatter, or when you use, um, yeah, subsurface, it doesn't, it's not going to be as clear as opaque. The material is, not, is just going to be different. Pretty good, but I think I need to erase a little more of this. Oops. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I wanted to just paint the underside of these um, fins too. Okay, let me really see what's happening. Maybe that's because I'm on a race, like a dum-dum. So we want to stay consistent and paint the underside of the fins. Even these little fins, I'll make another layer. And the reason why I'm making another layer, because I might want to change the color of everything or do a few different, you know, types. I do want to experiment with a crease. Oops. So I'm going to make a deets layer. And this is on the body. Might not need dynamic topology just yet. So let's save that. And let's just see what happens if we put a crease in there. I'm really just curious if it if it adds some separation to the color, makes it a little sharper. Which I think it might. I'm just curious what that looked like. I do it sometimes with drawings, but I'm not sure if this needs it, that extra detail. Let's change this to subsurface as well. Let's change the, the color of it. So it doesn't need to be that dark since the mouth isn't all that dark. Okay. And just for funsies, let's see what the eyes look like as subsurface because they might look nice too, actually. Even if we take away 
we make them a little more see-through. It's kind of interesting. And the teeth as well. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Let's bring back the plane. I'm gonna put on the bottom, that's right. Let's bring back the plane. What color do we want the plane to be? It's kind of a nice color. It's kind of an oceanic color. Although it might be nice to what do I want the background to be? Could try to match that beige color. It's a pretty good match. I think I'll be able to match this color. Maybe I'll just leave it like this. All right, so let's turn on post-process. I like to do full resolution. Let me save. Ooh, maybe I'll just save as. Now let me just save. Cause I can't remember if I changed anything. Yeah, let me just save. Okay, reflection. I do enjoy global illumination. The light bouncing off the ground, I love that. You might want to put a little bit more ambient occlusion in. Let's see. Maybe I can do without tone mapping this time. Get rid of the vignette for now. Okay, we don't need any of that really. The only other thing I want to do is maybe see how this light would look a little bit brighter even. I tend to do my sculpts like a bit dark, so I've been trying to work on that. See which view I like the best. I really like this view. But anyway, here, here is our little fish. I think I might just change this back to kind of grayish color. And this as well. Only because I find that my sculpts look a little bit better. Oops. And they're gray. Maybe I'll try.
try to match these two. And that way you can just focus on the fish. All right, cool. Well, I mean, I think that's about it. There's a lot more that we can do. I might do some more uh, later, but for now, I think I'm gonna call it. Otherwise, I'll just continue to work on it and it will literally go on forever. But I do think I wanna add in some new, some different types of fish and all that kind of fun stuff uh, because why not? I think he needs a couple friends, a couple little fish friends. All right, so. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, I guess I should try to do a turntable. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to learn more, check out my classes on Skillshare. I have 2D classes and 3D classes. If you want to see more, be sure to check me out on social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all Drug Free Dave, and also Facebook. There's some really great Facebook resources for Nomad Sculpt and Procreate, including my own group, Procreate Tutorials and Guidance. As always, keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I'll see you all in the next video.